All right, you guys, we're gonna get busy cutting out our F-117 stealth fighter. We use 30 millimeter, 28 millimeter EDF jet. I was gonna go over a few things, which is I started putting on here 45 cut outward. So that means you're gonna go on your line that way. And anywhere I got it, you'll see this is a 45 in. So that means you cut in. I'll start putting this on all my plans. That way it makes it a little easier for you. But alright, let's get started. I tape my sheet down on my foam board. And like I said, guys, always use the bow. Put the crown at the top. These sheets come with a little bow in them. So you want the crown at the top. And you'll see one side of the sheet is smoother than the other. I always like to put the crown at the top. It makes the plane when you build it, gives it a better airfoil shape. All right, let's start with the main airframe. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. As you can see, it's a 45 degree cut with an arrow pointing that way, so we're gonna put it on our line. Go ahead and do my 45s on the main airframe first. I numbered all the pieces. I'm going to try to get through this a little quicker than my other videos, too. Alright, for your Elevons, those are 45 inward. Turned out to be one cool jet. I love flying it. Again, guys, I'm just doing the 45 with the arrow pointing that way, so I'm 45 in it toward the inside of the fuselage or the main body of the plane. So we cut out our main, main airframe. We'll just go ahead and put that off to the side. We'll move on to piece mark number two, which is your fuselage. Here we got a 45 degree cut in toward the piece. And if you guys want, you can do more than the 45 degree angle on some of these. I even got it marked in some places where there's 65 degree angle cuts. You can make it 70, 75, kind of the more the better. Right now I'm just working on the main fuselage part. Alright, now these are all on your front of your fuselage, which is kind of your canopy front end here. 
We're going to do 65 degree cuts, all four of these angled inward. Like I said, you can make them a little more too. Kind of the more the better. So if you want to go 70 degree, Alright, now on these canopy lines here, in front of your fuselage, you're just going to want to score them. I would only score about halfway through them too. You don't have to go real deep. Just a nice little score is fine. Again, I'm just scoring all these. You don't want to go all the way through. I don't care about that paper moving. It's already on it. All right. This is your main fuselage piece. Now, what you want to do? Slip your sheet over, and the piece we just cut from the other side. We're going to take and put some clear tape over this. Again, here's our piece here. And I want to connect all these lines that we just scored and make them more so they won't fall apart on you. So you're just going to put clear tape on the back. Go ahead and put quite a few pieces just to make it nice and strong. So there's our piece we just made. Now you can take and break each one where you scored it. If you got anything hung up a little bit, just go back and do a little trim. So there you see. A lot of guys would cut this at 45s from the back, but you're really not going to need to because we're going to clear tape overall any of these cracks that are in here. So this is your main fuselage which will go right on this area. Actually exactly right there. Alright so that's our main fuselage. Let's move on to the top of the fuselage. These are all 45 cuts inward toward the piece and you'll see it here. 45 in. Cutting on the back of a carpet. It's actually just my wife's, one of her throw rugs. This stuff works really good. So you gotta go out and get one of those, uh, pads at the hobby store. So again we're just doing the top of the fuselage. All 45 cuts inward. Now here we have a line on top of the fuselage just score it. Wherever I have score you just want to score it. That means just go about halfway through. Now 
And again, keep your guys' plans off to the side because you'll find you'll need them at some place. Like these air intakes, they go on the side of this. You don't cut those out until we attach this to the main airframe because your flim piece will be all flimsy and stuff. All right, there's the line we just scored. I'm just going to take and snap a little. I'm going to put some clear tape across the back of that line just to make sure it never breaks in this spot. So there we go, that little score gave us that little bend. For this piece. on to these left air intake cover again there's some 65 degree cuts on here I prefer you to go more so if you get like 70 or 75 that's fine so they got to be some nice angles on them so these are your air intake covers that's what I call them anyway so here is the 65 degree line I'm gonna go ahead and put a lot more Probably like 70, 75 degree on there. Again on some of these 45's if you want to give them a little more like 50 that's fine. Alright, so this is your left intake. I got some lines there that you got to score. Just score across those lines. Again, just not all the way through, just score them. Get my X-Acto knife. I find an X-Acto knife works good on a lot of this stuff. Especially if you like building the bat wing. Gets right in there on them cuts. You can be a little more precise with them. So again, I'm just scoring these lines. Oops, I didn't finish my cut. Alright, there we go. There's one intake cover. Now you can see where I scored my lines in the top of it. I'm going to take and flip this piece over, add a couple of pieces of tape to the back. Again it's on the back side because you don't want to leave those lines open that you just scored. I just want to add this, make this piece a little stronger from behind here. Now you can take and break them where you scored them. So there we had our top piece, our main airframe. These are going to be our air intakes. Right, let's do the other side. This is the other right hand side of the air intake. inward, another 45 inward. Here's the 65. Again, just do 70 or 75. I really put my blade at an angle on these ones.
another 45. Is 45. Oh, that's right. Again, we're just cutting out the other side of the air intake. There's two of them. Again, we got to score these lines. Go ahead and use my X-Acto knife, it's a lot sharper and it does a more precise job. Alright. So again, let's take a now you can see where this is going to break where I scored it. And you're going to want to take and flip your piece over. Put some tape on this back side to keep your piece nice and rigid from the back. So that now you can fold your piece around and get shape you want. Alright, moving on to these tail fins. Okay, I just straight cut on the... Wherever I got straight cut, the rest, that means just all the way around the piece. The only ones you want to cut at angles are the ones that are marked. cut. Here's a 35 degree angle cut on the bottom of these stabilizer fins. If you want them to be angled slightly outward once you install them on your jet. So I just go less than 45 on that. Another straight cut in the back. other one out. And the rest are just straight cuts on these tail fins. There's only one 35 degree angle cut on the bottom of them. The rest are all just straight. Yeah, you guys are going to love and fly in this jet. It is awesome. Alright, so there we cut out all our pieces. Main, main airframe, main fuselage, top of the fuselage, left air intake, right in air intake, and then our tail fins. Oh, we got our little, these are the uh, exhaust spreaders. They're going to go in the back. They're going to slide in through the back of the jet. To keep open the exhaust in the back. I'll just hurry and knock these out real quick. These are just all straight cuts. Yeah, I find it's actually easier to build these jets than to try to put the plans together for them. 
and then they try to get all these different angles and dimensions and I try to make it in one piece that can just fold out for you guys again these are just they're called exhaust spreaders they're gonna spread out the exhaust back here they add rigidity to your tail fins in the back all right let's get this off the side there's one of my jet boats. There's the Joker's Wild. Pretty awesome. All right, guys, we got our main pieces cut out. Exhaust tubes. Our tail fins. Got our tail fins. All right, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and cut out these elevons. I'm gonna take and use my scissors. This is a hinge line here for your elevons. And I'm just gonna use one elevon because. That's all you really need. Again, you can mark this the top of your airframe because then you, you know it's got that bow in it. As you can see from the piece being bowed, it's still holding that bow. So I just mark it top. Take your elevon over here. Lay it on there. I just mark my corners. Use the same one, just flip it over to the other side. Get it on there nice and match it up. You want your elevons to be the same size. Just marking my corners. Alright, come back in here with your ruler. So, all right, now we're gonna make our cuts to get our hinge line. I always put my hinge lines on the top with just tape. So what I wanna do is this is still the top. So I'm gonna 45 toward the front of the jet. Just like so. Same on the other side. The other two are just straight cuts. Now you guys can see where I made the 45s toward the front of the plane. Now I just take this where I got that 45 edge. Turn your piece around. You just want to take off that 45 and put another 45 back cut into this piece. Just like that. And then you get a perfect hinge line. Go ahead and take that on there. Don't be worried about uh, try to put these on there and give them a little bit of don't make them too tight because then you can tr your servo is just doing a lot of work if the tape's too tight on these. So I leave a little gla gap in there so it's got room to flex around. Got a little piece of rub in here. I just take and trim off some of this. There we go. Again, for the other side, there's the 45 we put into it. Gonna turn it around, do a back cut into that 45 and take that piece right off. There you guys. 
and I leave a little gap. Now you guys for your elevons, you can go ahead and once you put your tape on the top, flip it over and stick a couple more pieces around there. That way it's taped from top and bottom. Still keep your hinge line. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and start working on installing the rest of these. You're going to see that the front, you want the front left and right corner here touching this edge. Or at least really close to it. And these should line up with each corner in the back. So I already got some tape laid out here so we ain't got to sit here all day. We're going to do some test fitting before we go hot gluing anything. Again, try to make sure everything looks lined up nice. Like I said, this is set right to the back corner. And this is just three millimeter Depron sheet. All right, so now that we got that, now you guys could see once you get your top on, then you can lay these back on here and then cut these out and trace around each one, mark your corners, and cut out your air t intakes later. All right, let's install this now. Now, of course. You'd be painting this thing at some point here and installing your electronics and make sure you got your, you know, whatever you got to do in there, you guys can take care of it. Here, I'm just going to line this up. Use some blue tape. Kind of doing some nice test fit in here, making sure everything's looking good. I always use this blue painter's tape because it peels it off real easy. And just make sure you're all lined up real nice. Your corners all meet up nice. Alright, so those, there's that. Alright, so now once you have your main fuselage on and the top of your fuselage, I'm going to go ahead and start putting my tape where I want it because I would have already installed like my receiver and my battery, you know, where I wanted all that. You, you didn't have to cut out for your EDF yet. But lately I haven't even been... I don't even hot glue my jets no more, I just clear tape them. It makes a really nice seam. Your seams meet up, that way you don't see all that hot glue and all that nasty stuff. And once you get them all clear tape, this thing is really strong. Yeah, there's really no need for the whole hot glue system. O only for applying your tails, uh, I'll use the hot glue gun. And believe it or not, you're saving weight because you ain't using all that hot glue. I mean, one of them hot glue sticks alone got some hefty weight behind it. So again, I'm just going to attach everything using clear scotch 